Welcome back. Learning objective number two, applying key control activities to cash receipts and cash payments. As we discussed before, cash is highly susceptible to theft. Who wouldn't want it? So what do we consider cash? We consider cash to be coins, currency, checks, money orders, money on hand, or in the bank. So a general rule is, if a bank will accept it for deposit, then it's considered to be cash. So when talking about cash receipts, that is the cash that the company would receive. Uh, this includes cash that a uh, company receives over the counter, like from customers, um, a check, which I feel like I need to explain. A check is a piece of paper. People used to bring them to the grocery stores and you think it lines are long now. People would have to write this check, which includes a date, a to, a from, a signature, uh, an amount. You actually have to like put in the numbers and then write out the, spell out the numbers. And, and then people take a while to do this. So if you think it's annoying waiting for people to dig through their thing to get change, um, just think about it. And it's really like, <laughs> What's the verification? Um, the person's writing the check. Uh, you think they have money. Anyways, when it call, says a check is bounced, that's when somebody wrote a check, you received it, and then when you go to cash it, the bank is like, sorry, this piece of paper is worth nothing. But anyways, we'll talk about it until it's gone. Um, what has replaced the check is our electronic funds transfer, or EFTs. So you may, you may have a job and maybe you received over-the-counter cash, maybe you received a check, or most likely you received an electronic funds transfer automatically deposited into your bank account. Um, so whether you receive any one of those, it's just like a company uh, receiving it from their customers. Okay, so internal controls over cash receipts is more effective when cash receipts are deposited into the banking account daily or made by electronic funds transfer? Absolutely. Is it always uh, effective to you know, deposit daily cash every day? Well, it depends. What's the cost benefit? If you are receiving one payment from a customer every other day for $20, maybe you don't even deposit it. However, if you are receiving a lot of money, say your casino, and your business is literally taking cash from customers, then you probably will be doing daily, if not, you know, um, several times a day, cash collections, cash deposits, um, and involving an outside security team. Okay. So we can apply the control activities that we looked at in learning objective one to cash receipts or cash received. You can um, assign one person to handle the cash, you can have different people receiving the cash, handing out the cash, um, which we'll talk about in the next one. Um, so somebody else receiving it, uh, handling it, and then reconciling it. We can use documentation. So every time we receive cash, we're going to issue a receipt. Um, and every time we deposit that cash, we're gonna get a deposit slip. We're gonna have physical controls, cash registers, frequent uh, deposits, and we are going to have review and reconciliation, comparing how much cash we think we have in the bank to how much, and on hand, to how much cash we actually have on hand and in the bank. All right, so that is for cash received, otherwise known as cash receipts. Now let's look at cash payments, otherwise known as cash that we paid. Again, I feel like we can look at this in context of ourselves. Now we just worked all summer, we have a bunch of cash, and what are some cash payments that we're gonna make? Well, we are going to, and how are we gonna make them? Well, uh, maybe I, I feel like this is a states thing, but maybe it's here as well. Uh, I go for dinner with my friends, um, somebody picks up the bill, and we decide to all Venmo them our, our one-fifth of the bill. So somebody buy, you know, say we go out, it's like fancy dancy and it comes to like, whatever, uh, $600, $1,000, let's say $1,000, let's say like we went for it. Um, and there's five of us, somebody pays that $1,000 bill, uh, each one of us will then um, Venmo that person that paid uh, $200. So that'll be a cash payment via electronic transfer, otherwise known as Venmo. You can also do um, an email money transfer or whatever that is. 
I don't even know. PayPal? Anybody use PayPal? I used PayPal uh, last year with my German friend. Okay, so when we are paying cash, think of it now in a corporation. We can um, authorize one or more people to, to sign off on checks or sign off on the electronic funds transfer. Typically, there is authorization levels where multiple signatories are required over a certain threshold. 10, 12 years ago, that threshold was 10K. Um, I've seen it vary, um, and it doesn't necessarily vary with the size of the company, um, although maybe it should. So you might have an assignment of responsibility with an escalating responsibility, depending on how much cash. You'll want to have a segregation of duties. So you'll want to have different people paying the cash than different people receiving the cash because um, just a law can go wrong. You know, maybe you're like, yeah, 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 I paid this when you or, you know, maybe you don't record the amount of money that you receive when you just, and you say that you paid it. Anyways, like law can go wrong. So you want to have an appropriate segregation of duties. Um, you want to have somebody, you know, responsible for recording or approving it and another person actually doling out the cash. Documentation, always want to document. If it's not documented, it's not done. Uh, sorry for <laughs> the, uh, the bad memories that I just uh, conjured up and everybody who will audit or has audited. If it's not documented, it's not done, but it makes sense. That's why checks are pre-numbered. That's why um, document uh, ID transactions are put in sequential order. It helps us take um, and tie back to what was done here. Physical controls, we don't just put cash on the counter, you know, like that's, that's like inviting theft. Um, we want to, you know, require signing. We want to have physical controls, even in, in, in place of the checks. We want to have passwords on the laptops. Maybe we only have one laptop that's used for um, electronic fund transfers, and that has a lot of security on it, not to mention virus software. So physical controls. So when I say physical controls, I also think of digital controls because really it's now that the cash like EFTs are kind of just like numbers on a screen, physical controls can be um, like expanded to include digital as well. Okay. And then review and reconciliation at the end of the day, just like with cash receipts, what do we think we have on hand versus what do we actually have on hand? And perfect review and reconciliation. That is going to be in our last learning objective where we look at how to actually do a bank reconciliation, which is pretty dang exciting. And if you don't believe me, listen to the beginning of that video because I think you will be in for a big surprise. Anyways, it is your turn. So take a moment, uh, pause this video, have a read of all of these little situations because there are control activities used for Shira's Boutique Limited for cash payments. So for each one of these, identify the weakness, pardon me, explain the weakness, and then let me know what control is violated. And then for each weakness, tell me an improvement. And I just wanna say, last one, we did a bit of theory. And here we're doing the application, so we're really gonna cement it in. All right, give it a go and I'll talk to you soon. All right, so blank checks are stored in an unmarked envelope on a shelf behind the cash register. What can go wrong here? Well, the checks are not stored in a secure area, therefore uh, it doesn't have the appropriate physical controls. How can we fix it? Well, <laughs> checks can be stored in a safe or a locked file drawer. All right, it doesn't need to be magical. Uh, oftentimes, simple is best. Let's move on to number two. The purchasing manager personally approves payments for purchases and signs the checks to issue to pay suppliers. So the approval of and payment to suppliers is likely done by, well, no, not likely, pardon me, is done by the wrong person. There needs to be an assignment of responsibility and segregation of duties. The purchasing manager should not approve the bills for payment, nor should this manager have signing authority. An employee other than the one involved with purchasing, who is aware of the delivery of goods and services, should be authorizing the payment, and another member of the senior management should be assigned check signing duties. Okay, because, I mean... They could just approve some payments, 
issue the checks, maybe take some goods, um, and be able to kind of hide their tracks there. So definitely need to have that assignment of responsibility and segregation of duties. Okay. So when the store manager goes away for an extended period of time, oh, how helpful. She pre-signs checks to be used in her absence. What could go wrong? Well, um, the blank checks are signed. They can be used for anything. Uh, so somebody can misappropriate them, write a note, like, you know, put Sam Taylor on there, and all of a sudden uh, I can cash a check because it was pre-approved. All right, so um, the assignment of responsibility has been violated here. So what should happen is when the bank met, store met from a store manager goes away for the extended period of time, they can assign their responsibility and have a second signing authority to sign the checks um, that are not gonna be pre-signed. All right, uh, number four, the company checks are not pre-numbered. Well, uh, this means that appropriate documentation cannot be had because like what, you just, you have checks without numbers on them? How many checks did you sign? Well, I don't know. Well, which number is this? Well, I don't know. It's just, they would just be just wonky. All right, um, so what should we do? Well, <laughs> if they're not in the pre-numbered and they should be, then we can have Checks should be pre-numbered and they should have a serial continuity um, schedule so that, and know which ones were written, how many were written in this period, okay, how many to start with, cool, and be able to reconcile that at the end. Okay, the company account prepares the bank reconciliation and reports any discrepancies um, to the store ma manager. Okay, well, it is not independently prepared, meaning um, that the company accountant is doing all the recording for other items. Um, they shouldn't also prepare the um, bank reconciliation, at least uh, not on their own. Um, and a person independent of the accountant should prepare the bank reconciliation. But we understand sometimes it's small business, so if that's not possible, then the accountant can prepare the bank reconciliation, but the owner, not the store manager, because the store manager can access cash, should approve it. So you really do have to have those controls and oversights in place with review and reconciliation of the bank. All right, how did you do? Thank you so, so, so much for your attention. Uh, we're gonna go on to the next learning objective, number three in the next video, our last one, last one, best one, prepare a bank reconciliation. Talk soon.